I will start with 103 and then go to 40. Uh, three. Yeah. Hold on, we're getting some microphones to uh, people, oh. and then they're going to start asking you questions. Hello, Bobby and Kristen. This is Janet Tapales from Manila. Janet! I'm over here. Oh, there you are. Congratulations. Thank you. No Thank Philippines you. is cheering for you. Hey, Ruben. Thank Can you. you talk about the significance of this win, and also you're dedicating it to your late mother, Bobby? Well, um, my mother passed away in, in August of this year, Kathy Lopez. She, um, she was... The, the main force in my childhood um, who, uh, who encouraged me to play the piano and to write music and to go for my dream. And she pushed me as hard as she could. And She told him if he didn't practice, she would make him eat the piano. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so I really, um, this song is about leaving people you love. And, and that's what happened to me this year. She was taken from us. So this song became an expression of that. It was already written. It wasn't about her, but I sang it at the funeral, and it was very helpful for me in healing. We're going to 40 and then 104. Hi, in the back. Hi. Carlos Aguilar from Romesca. I just wanted to know, uh, were there any specific uh, Mexican music styles that inspired the song, and any specific Mexican cultural beliefs that inspired the lyrics? Um, well, we were looking at the Rancho Bolero style. Um, Bolero Ranchero. Ranchero style, I always. Uh, and um, we were also looking at Jorge Negrete and Pedro Infante and, and the, the crooners of the 30s and 40s, um, specifically from Mexico, that, that sort of inspired the Ernesto de la Cruz version. Um, and uh, what just happened? Um, and, and we worked with Camilo Lara as a musical, a Mexican musical consultant. And he is also known as the Mexican Institute of Sound. And he took us through basically a college course of Mexican musicology to prepare us to work on this. We're going to 104 and then we'll come down to 229. Congratulations, guys. It's going to be a ha this is getting to be a habit. Uh, can you talk about how it feels to win for a second time in a few years? and also for a song that resonates with countries from all over the world that honors the traditions for remembering the dead. We didn't uh, dare to dream that we would ever be nominated or win again. It's very, very nice to be back. It's four years later, it was raining yesterday, just to, as it was four years ago. <laughs> if it rains in LA and the Winter Olympics have happened, <laughs> that's, that's the two things that are our good luck signs now. I guess so. Um, it's, it feels great to win again. It's wonderful. It's a great honor and a great recognition for people that have worked really hard. Not just us, but um, the, the people that worked on the song, Jermaine Franco, who arranged it and wrote many other songs in the film, and uh, many, many, other, many other folks that poured their love into this thing. The incredible Mexican musicians who um, recorded the bulk of the music down in Mexico City. Um, so it's a wonderful thing for us to be a very small part of. And Mexico is not the only country that has ancestor honor uh, celebrations. The Philippines is, as you know well, they celebrate the holiday too. Uh, China and Japan and I think it's something that we need a little bit more of in this country and we, we actually celebrated um, Day of the Dead uh, in, in November uh, and had a picture of my mother and, and a lot of my a lot of my our grandparents yeah. it was a really healing wonderful ritual that we're going to put as part of our family tradition uh, every year it's a wonderful way to, to feel connected with the people who came before you but not in a sad way in a wonderful storytelling way we're going to 229 and then we'll wrap it up with 187. Hello, Robert. Congratulations Thank to you. both of you. Thank also. you. Uh, by, I wonder, Robert, by any chance you speak Spanish? I don't. I'm, uh, I'm Filipino. My, my grandmother spoke Spanish. My dad didn't. He was born on a boat on the way from, the, from Manila. And, uh, and so I never uh, learned, and I, it's one of the great regrets in my life. What, is, uh, uh, what would you like to say to those uh, immigrants, people that look at you as an example? I, um, I've always felt other in this country, even though I was raised very assimilated. And I, I just, if, it's, if, if our success can help someone pursue their dream, I know that examples play a huge role. And I want to encourage every brown kid to, to pursue their dream, just like my mom did to me. And we'll wrap it up with 187 to your left. Thank you. Hi, I'm Salvador from Mexico. Hey. Hi. Uh, how are you? Congratulations. I want to know what is the most amazing gift that, that this adventure gave it to you as a person, this adventure in the culture, Mexican culture tradition? 
Um, as I mentioned before, I think that from now on, we will always celebrate Day of the Dead in our family. Like Christmas, like Hanukkah, or like Halloween. Um, Day of the Dead has become part of a, a healing process in our family because loss is inevitable. And um, it's, a, it's a, you know, this year was a very hard one for us. And it was so healing. And I want to pass that tradition on to our daughters. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Congratulations. Thank you. All right.